Lord. Everybody ready upstairs? Yeah. Okay. Where no man has gone before. Now, you know what? You can laugh all you want, but when I, when I was a kid and this show came on television, the original Star Trek, and I was fascinated. Yes. I mean, it, just, it, just, it was just the most amazing thing I'd ever seen. And what you don't realize is a lot of the stuff that these guys made up, we copied and became technology. Though I know nobody cares a flip phone anymore, but those flip phones were designed after the communicators on Star Trek. There's so many things that, that they did in uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey, which was 10 years prior to this, that they used and have, have followed their imagination and followed it on into science and created things. And so th this is all fantasy and imagination, but you know what? That's the whole point this morning, if you'll let me go there. Next page. In Isaiah 43, 19, God is telling them in the old covenant, this is thousands of years ago. He says, behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not, shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and I'll make rivers in the desert. And I want you to realize right now that as a Christian man in, in 2022, that we have gotten into such a rut in the church and, and overall in the world that we just go in and come out, go in and come out. We don't pay more attention to what's going on than anything. We live 40 hours, we work 40 hours a week, living for the weekend, hoping we can make enough money to buy a better car. Mm. And God is trying to get our attention and flag us down and say, look, y'all haven't even seen, I got a new thing. I got so you know, just when you think you're getting tired of the old, don't get tired of the old. Keep looking. I got something brand new. Yes. I got something that you've never seen before. It'll keep you so fascinated. That's like those cherubs that, that fly around the, the when uh, when in the book of Revelation when it said and, and uh, Daniel and Ezekiel and all these places where you see their pictures of heaven. And they're crying, holy, holy, holy. And every time they go around, they cry, holy, holy, holy. It's not because they're redundant. It's because every time they go around, they see something brand new that just blows their mind. That they can't hop, stop to cry, holy. But you know, sometimes in the church, sometimes in our walk with God, it gets kind of dry as dust. Oh, I, I know I'm thinking, Kim, me and you, we're gonna, I'm going to preach to you today because everybody else is so wet and excited and hallelujah. Well, okay, right. I'm just, I'm, maybe I'm not talking to the right crowd, but I'm ready for something to blow my yes. skirt up. Yes. I'm ready to see God show up and show out. How about you? I'm ready to see things that I've been reading about all my life manifest yes. in my lifetime. Yes, sir. Come on, you know God. what? I kept looking for it and looking for it, and I'm just wondering if it isn't right here in front of me and I can't see it. Next page. Okay. 1 Corinthians 2 9 says, I has not seen. Come on in, girl. You ain't interrupting a thing. Come on in. You got your whole family here today. I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared. Okay, so there's been a preparation going on. Something's been in the works since you were even a glint in God's eye. But from the foundation of, of time, before the, before the foundation of the earth, God has had something specific in mind just for you that no other eye has ever seen, no other ear has ever heard. Now, it have not even entered into the hearts of men. Well, God has prepared for those who love him. Yes, sir. Well, that's the question. Right. And I'm going to be honest. Can I just get honest with y'all today? Come on. You know, I'm, I'm getting old. And I've, I've been praying for things that I wanted to see happen that haven't happened. And, and you know, in, in, uh, in this last couple of weeks, uh, you know, I had, a new, I had a new cane come to the earth. And, and I looked at that little baby and I held her in my hands. And, and I thought, you know what, this, this little girl's whole life is ahead of her. She has no idea what's going ahead, so I start prophesying over her and saying the things that I know God wants for her to have. And I don't even have any idea. I'm just guessing. I'm just saying, if somebody was holding me, this is what I want them to say to me. And even as I spoke to her, and I'm her grandfather, and nobody could love her more than I do, I think, well, he loves her more than I could possibly right. love her. And he loves you more than you could possibly be loved by anybody else on this earth. You can't get that kind of love out of a husband or a wife or a child no. or a grandchild. You can't get that kind of love out of a career or riches or fame or glory. The only kind of love you can get that will fulfill and satisfy that hole in you is when your father holds you in his hand. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, I just got a revelation. I just can't hardly get to it quick enough. Next page. 
In Ecclesiastes 11, 4, he says this, if you wait until the wind and the weather are just right. I got Johnny Lawrence is here today, one of the founding fathers of this ministry. Johnny's a farmer. And you know, Johnny, I bet you'd echo this. If I wait till everything's perfect, if I wait for the price of hogs to go down to buy them, I'll just keep waiting. If I wait for the wind and, and the weather to be perfect to plant, I'll never plant. If you wait for the perfect time to start your career or to, to start your mission or to follow your vision, there's never a perfect time. This, my, both, all three of my kids have, or have children by the time I'm my next birthday. And most of them didn't think this was coming. <laughs> Madison set a world record for pregnancy tests. She thought if I keep taking them, it'll go away. <laughs> <laughs> but all of a sudden, she held that little girl last week, and now things are different. Because what was a concept became a reality. God has a concept that he wants to show you as a reality that will change your life for the rest of these days. Yes. But if we get so locked into our rut and what we think we know, and here's the biggest danger to what God wants to do new in your life is what he's done old in your life. Because you start measuring, I got a slide on that later, but as you start measuring everything today against what happened yesterday. Oh, I'm, I'm Holy Ghost and I'm, yeah, I, I got it. I'm with you. I do the same dance. I know, I understand. But I'm trying to tell you that he's got a new thing. He's got a newer thing than we've ever seen before. And so what we're doing about it, we're doing the best we can, doing exactly what we've seen others do, doing what God told me last, but he's trying to get our attention. But if you keep get being locked in to what your routine is, You'll miss what I'm doing right now. Yes. And as, and as bad as I hate to admit this, I know this isn't you, but I've come to find out that I do not know everything. Oh. I know most of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't know. We just know what we think we know. And we're the world's leading expert on what we think we know. Right? We did, that's what we think we know. We think that, that, that my knowledge, see, my experience with God was all authentic. Okay? You know, when I got saved, it was a real deal. When I got baptized on the Spirit, that's the way it's got to happen. Okay. Some of these other squirrely things, that some of you, I don't know about that. But mine was real. You know why? Because it was real to me. And whatever happened to me, man, that would happen to Kim. And whatever happened to Kim, man, that would happen to Kim. But you know what? It doesn't matter because he's so individualistic. And he's going to do something brand new. One time Jesus was spitting mud and rubbing their eyes and they'd be healed. Another time he just said, be healed, and they'd be healed. Yes. And the church of the mud spitters would get mad. That can't be right. Was there no mud involved? Well, you didn't get really healed. You just had an emotional healing. You're just seeing through your emotions. It's not really real. I don't know. But if I'm waiting for everything to be just perfect, then I will never plant and I'll never harvest anything. And I'm telling you, the older I get, I used to be wild and live by faith and, and do all these crazy things. And the older I get, I didn't realize how secure I had become. Unwilling to risk. That's just me. Go ahead and just send you all your judgment to me. To, to send it to judgeme.com at aol.com. Okay, whatever. I'm just saying that go ahead and tell me that. But the older you get, the more you try to save money, the more you try to ensure what's going on. Right. And you give up the, the idea that I could risk something and find out what else is on the other side. Next page. Well, I just want to remind us all that delayed obedience it's still just disobedience. <laughs> when you say the phrase, God's dealing with me about something, he doesn't deal. This isn't, let's make a deal. This isn't, you know, let's just see what, I'll tell you, we'll come to the table and negotiate. He doesn't negotiate. He tells you what to do, and when you don't do it, the longer you don't do it, you're in disobedience. The longer you remain in, in that place of analysis, paralysis, it's just disobedience. When God tells you to buy an eye shaving truck, you just buy it. Come on. Right? Yes, sir. Who told you? To, what kind of crazy man does something like that? 
Well, somebody wants to be to have more money than they can possibly do with in a few years because that's going to expand and because they took a step. And I'm just praying over you right now and blessing that business. Thank you, Lord. It's going to multiply and it's going to feed the hungry. It's going to give uh, encourage to the widows and orphans. It's going to be because it's in your hand. Yes. Y'all even know what I'm talking about. Ken Ashley got an uh, icy desert truck and it's like crack. <laughs> yes. Yes. Go get you one. You'll be standing in line just begging. You'll be saying, listen, uh, can I trade some bottles or uh, bo box tops or anything? No, Y'all don't even know what that is, dude. Oh. Bottles. I used to get up on, when I was a kid. Yep. Anybody with me? I'd get up on a Saturday morning. Yep. And I'd go find bottles and then I'd go take yes. them to the store and I'd get enough money to go to the swimming pool. Yep. Yes. You guys don't know what you're yep. doing. Next page. Yep. That's right. Mark chapter 7, verse number 13. Jesus is talking to the Pharisees. He said, you make the word of God of no effect through your traditions which you have handed down. Now that's easy for us to spot with the Pharisees, but how about in the charismatic church where we've got three fast songs, two fast songs, two slow songs, a message in tongues and an interpretation to take up the offering, hear the sermon and hit the road. What, what is that? Are we doing exactly the same thing? We just get into a routine to where we, we want God to come to come fit himself into our schedule. And I'm just as guilty because it's easier to manage people when you've got a routine. But if you want God to move, sometimes the stall gets messy. That's what it says in Proverbs. It said, with the strength of the ox comes the mess. I want the strength of the ox. I'll deal with the mess because I'd rather have people living here with their eyes open, their ears open and raised from the dead than to just come in and say, well, wasn't that good? Wasn't that very, you know, a timely uh, relative message? I don't want to give out relative messages. I want to say something that's going to offend you to the point that you're going to change and become more like Jesus. So I don't want to render the word of no effect just because I do it so much that I forget why I'm doing it. Next page. Right. Our experience, good or bad, can begin to work against us because either way, experience limits God. <laughs> My experience limits God because I've set the cap on what I will expect from him yes. based upon what he did last time. Yes, come on, Pastor. And even if it worked great, you know, one Easter we had over 50 people baptized here. And I keep thinking back to that. And God's saying, you know what, that was 50. How would you like 5,000? I know that's right. Can you wrap your mind around that? Can you believe me for things like that? Can you go beyond your own ability to reason and figure it out and begin to reach into the impossible again and sow into that without any hope of recovering and watch God do something that will blow our minds again? Got him? Next page. Walk factor one. Is you got to remove perceived limits. Hmm. You got to remove the limits on yourself. You know what? I bet there's people in this room that I could point to you and say, you know what? In your own situation and in your own life, people counted you out, but you just decided to go ahead and do it anyway because nobody told you. you could. Hmm. Keith Lesson just gave a testimony, but you you fixing to go to the head shop? You going to the head office? You done got in the door now? They shouldn't have never promoted you. Right? How'd you like to own that place? Come on, Keith Letson. Hmm. How many of you are ready to, to start believing again beyond what everybody else has said about you? You know I'm an engineer, and I'm going to tell you right now that, it's, that it is physically, aeronautically, and, and uh, completely impossible for a bumblebee to fly. His wing mass and his wingspan, his, the air of his wings cannot generate physically enough energy to propel his body. <laughs> but nobody has told the bumblebee. I know that's right. <laughs> How does it happen? Because God just decided I'm going to show you something you ain't never seen before. Come on, Pastor. Somebody explain gravity to me. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> right. How come we're stuck to this planet? I, I'm not magnetic. Most of me isn't now. Some of it is. <laughs> How come stuff doesn't just fly around in the air? How come we walk across the earth and we're, we're held to the earth? Explain it to me. Right. It's just gravity. Great. What does that mean? Well, it's just a uh, attraction force. What does that mean? We don't know. We just gave it a name. Gave it something we can sound really smart and, and you know, uh, 
intellectual. We can't explain it because God has just decided that he said, I have, you're kept by the power of God. You're, everything, in the, everything in the universe is held in place by the power of his word. We think we're so smart. Everybody say it with me. Remove perceived limits. Remove received limits. All right, let's say this may not be the smart. Maybe it's too. How about this? Take the lid off. Take the lid off. There you go. Next page. Matthew 17, 20. God brings his son to the disciples who he had seen them doing great marvelous things. He said, listen, can you take care of my son? He's a lunatic. I know that's probably politically incorrect today, but you know what? Maybe he wanted to tell him what was wrong so he could get him healed. Come on. Instead, of, instead of not hurting his feelings, maybe we can trust God and go on and get it done. Come on. Sorry, did I hurt your feelings by saying that? He said, I brought my, my son, he's a lunatic. He throws himself in the fire. He throws himself in the water. I brought him to your disciples and they could not cure him. Why? Jesus walked over and said, ay, ay, ay. How long will you guys not get it? How long is it going to take for you guys to believe? Mm. He cast the devil. He didn't put him in therapy. He didn't put him on med medicine. Oh. He cast the devil out of the boy, and he was healed that very same hour. Come on, amen. And the disciples, came, you know, kind of backed off. <laughs> and I said, "Hey, hey, uh, what, what wrong there, Jesus? What, what, we did everything you do. You know, a lot of times we do everything he does, but we're not in it. Yeah. We're on. just doing it because we saw him do it. Don't Almost do like the, the seven sons of Sceva who's tried to cast the devil out, and they're only doing it because they've been watching Paul do it. You know, sometimes God wants you to get invested and not just do what you've seen other people do. But it's not their thing. It's not their testimony. It's my relationship with God, my faith that I'm going to be using. Yes, sir. And Jesus answered and said, because of your unbelief, for certainly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Right. Everybody say that with me. And nothing, and nothing will, be impossible will be impossible for you. What are we talking about? Whatever it is. Yes, anything. Whatever it is, I've heard so many, I was, I was talking to, uh, we were down in South Florida and I was giving this testimony because somebody had been trying to get pregnant and trying to get pregnant and, and, they, and so many bad reports had come in and they couldn't have a baby. And I said, well, let me tell you, I think sometimes we've gotten so technologically advanced that we're doing things that are actually working against our faith. He said, I had a man come to me one night, I was doing a, a concert outside over in Huntsville and a guy came up to me with his pregnant wife and said, listen, would you pray for us because they've done the ultrasound and they can't find a brain Inside our baby, they're, they're recommending that we abort. So I said, well, let's just pray. And I prayed over that unborn child and, and you know, did everything I knew how to do. And I said, amen. And they went on their way. And, and a couple of years later, I was back over that way doing something. And a guy comes walking up to me. And he's got this blonde-haired, blue-eyed boy on his shoulder. He said, I just want you to know, this is the one that you prayed for. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. That's good, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Because uh, to, to me, it seems impossible. Yes. But if I've got mustard seed faith, it don't matter. You know what mustard seed is? Oh, Little you. bitty seed. It's not that it's small. It's just the character of it. Yes. A mustard seed will not mix or compromise its integrity. You know, if you take a red rose and you plant it next to a white rose, they, they'll cross pollinate you get a pink rose. You take jalapenos or habaneros and grow them next to tomatoes. Yes. Sometimes the tomatoes will come out and they'll taste hot because right. they'll kind of, because of the proximity, they'll begin to mix. Yes. You put a mustard seed anywhere you want to, all you're going to get out of that is a mustard plant. Come on. Yeah. That's right. It doesn't mix. It doesn't compromise. It doesn't water down. It doesn't change because of its environment or the others trying to exert influence over them. That's good. They just stand their ground. And what seems to be small and what seems to not have any influence one day grows up so big that even the birds that would have plucked it from the ground and devoured it now take refuge in its limbs. Wouldn't it be good for you one day to look at the people that mocked you and, and made fun of you? Someday they're standing under the shadow of the thing that you've become and just say, hey, yeah, that's right, I was that mustard seed you was making fun of. I was the one you were telling me couldn't do that. Well, look at here. I've already done it. Yeah. 
They enjoy my shade. Next page. Y'all getting anything out of this? Yeah. Yes, sir. So here's the thing. I want some of you. So a lot of the folks I want to hear this never come. So here you just share it for me. Here, I want you to say today is no more. I'm not going to falter between two opinions. I'm either going to believe the word of God or I'm not. I'm going to believe God's promise or I'm not. I'm not going to let somebody else water it down with their opinion. I'm not going to let somebody come in with a bad word or a bad testimony to defeat the purpose of God's word. I'm going to stand on who I know and what I know until the end of time. Yes. Number two, I'm going to quit doubting myself. I'm going to quit doubting myself. Why would anybody else believe in you if you don't believe in yourself? I know, that's right. Come on, Pastor. If you come to my job interview and you don't believe in yourself, I'm not going to hire you. Right, right. Because you'll spend more time trying to get affirmed than you will doing your job. Number three, quit allowing, no more allowing others to define you. How many times, how many, listen, if you've got to get off social media to get your own self back, then get off of it. Who cares what you had for lunch yesterday? <laughs> you know, I started following some people and then the police got involved and got ugly. I don't know. I'm kidding. <coughs> I've just never lived in a time where, where we, you know, this whole zo zombie apocalypse has happened. Because here we are. Yes. Yes, I know that's right. I was on the subway in New York City. Everybody in there was on the phone. I'm thinking, you might as well be in here by yourself. I would have sat next to him, but somebody had urinated in the seat. Yeah, I love that New York. No matter where you go, because everybody's hanging on this, and they've forgotten how to talk to each other. To make a friend, to, to invest in another life. Because you know what, it's easy to be a coward and hide behind that, that, that account and that phony identity. But it takes some gumption. And it's like this, I just don't believe that God had in mind specifically that we were going to witness to somebody through an instant messenger. Okay. But that we were going to witness to them face to face and tell them how Jesus has impacted my life individually. Yes. I don't know what he's done for you, but let me tell you what he's done for me. Oh, no, that's right. Thank you, Lord. That's the only way anybody's going to get it, right? Yes. Number four, we're going to quit no more searching for validation. Just get it today. In the name of Jesus, starting right now, if you've never said it or done it, I am the head and not the tail. I'm above only and not beneath. I'm everything God is in the flesh. He has made me in his image. I'm joint heir with Jesus Christ. Whatever he has, I have. And when Jesus saved me, he sat down at the right hand of the Father, and I sat down inside of him. So I'm joint heir. I'm king with the king. I'm yes. Lord with the Lord. Yes. He's the king Lord. of kings. And Lord of Lords. Yes. Amen. Thank you, God. Amen. Whatever I put my hand to is going to prosper. And whatever he's put in my heart to do, I will accomplish it because nothing is going to be impossible. Amen. Number two, number four, five, stop sitting on quit. So many people start out and they already got their hand on the quit button. Yeah. Let's go. You know what? I've had several cases in my life. Not very many, but a few cases of when I've married people that it ended in divorce. Because one of the rules I've had, and the only time I've ever broken that rule is when I've gotten into trouble. I make people spend at least one trip around the sun with that person to see if they're some sort of serial killer or not. Right. Find out what they look like when they get angry. Huh. Yes. See what disagreements you might run into. But one of the biggest things is that you do not have the D word in your vocabulary. Come on. Amen. Right. You do not put that word as any. I've had people, I've, went, I've been to weddings and, and they were crossing their glasses and drinking their toast right in front of the wedding cake. And the guy said, if, I'll, if you get fat, I'll divorce you. And I'm thinking, where's an iron skillet when you need one? Oh. Bang! Hit that guy upside the head. You better not ever say anything like that again. You just be happy she married an ugly butt like you. Get your hand up quick. If you're going to do it, do it, right? right. If you're yes, going to go, go. If you're going to go to school, go to school. Yep. If you're going to uh, apply for a job, apply for it. If you're gonna, whatever you're going to do, just do it. 
Because the minute you get off quit and you burn the ship behind yes. you like Cortez did, there ain't nowhere to go but this way. Right? right? Yes. Amen. And finally, Amen. the last thing is you know where you got to settle. You just got to settle. This, some of us, I've been around youth a long time, and youth are the worst because they vacillate between am I saved and am I not? Am I saved and am I not? Are you saved? Let's settle it today. We're going to settle it before you leave your day. Whether you're saved or not, whether you're going to hell or you're going to heaven. What else? Are you baptized yes. in the Holy Spirit? I don't know. Let's settle it today. Yep. Are you healed? I don't know. Let's settle it today. Because the same blood that saved you is the same blood that healed you. Yes, sir. Huh. Yes. So, Lord, I pray right now for us. That in the matchless name, the name is above every other name, that those that are not on, that are on the fence or have never known you as Lord of their life, that the day we say with our heart, Lord, forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart and live forever. Lord, I want to embrace you and declare that you are the Lord of my life. I believe you were raised from the dead for me. And Lord, I, from this day forward, I'm going to serve you for the rest of my days. For, the, for those of us that have been saved, Lord, I pray you fill us Baptize us, Jesus, in the Holy Spirit with fire, with tongues, with, with prophecy, with everything that comes. Let every gift manifest so that we can save this lost and dying world. I thank you, Lord, from this day forward that I'm going to embrace my destiny. I'm going to ask you not what do I want to do, but what do you want me to do? And I'm going to do it with all my might, knowing that one day I'm going to stand before you and I'm going to give an account of what I did with this precious life that you've given me. And I want to say, Lord, I poured it out. As an offering before you. And we receive it now in Jesus' name. Next page. In Jesus' name, yes. Thank you, Lord. Well, factor number two, stop helping Satan. Huh. He's trying to accuse you and cut you down. Don't give him any help. Yes. Resist him and he'll flee. Yeah. Resist him and he'll flee. If you don't resist him, he hangs out with you all the time. He'll send you family members and people that can just cut you to the bone. Madison was telling me about some guy on tour that, that has something ugly to say every time. I said, what's his name? Because I'm going to look him up when we go see him. And I'm just going to sit with him and smile at him real big. But I'm hoping he doesn't say anything because I'm going to have to respond to that. <laughs> yes. And you should feel that way too because when, somebody, when somebody's saying ugly things about you, they're not say, saying them about you. They're saying them about God's child. Okay. They're saying about your daddy's child. Don't you feel like he, don't you think he's got a little feeling about that? And I'm just saying if you receive it, you're agreeing with them and you're agreeing and you say of yourself that I'm a grasshopper because he said I was. I say it's time we resist all that and embrace what he says. And don't keep dipping down and dipping down and trying to claw our way back out of the same territory every time. Next page. Boy, I've got to hurry. 1 Corinthians 15, 33 says, Do not be fooled. Bad, com bad companions ruin good character. Now, we know that in a personal sense. But how about thoughts and emotions right. and ideas about yourself? If you let those things hang around, yeah. they'll ruin you. You know, it doesn't take very much to go from being gung-ho to being defeated. Okay. It only takes a few thoughts. Come on. Amen. A few times of pondering how bad you've got it or how bad things are. Next thing you know, you're not, you're not leading the charge. You're sitting on the sidelines. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't look at me like you don't know what I'm doing. Next page. <laughs> Proverbs 13 says, Conversely, but if you walk with wise men, you will be wise. But the companions of fool will be destroyed. If you want to get stronger, work out with somebody that's stronger than you. If you want to get faster, run with somebody that's faster than you. If you want to learn something, get with somebody that knows what you don't know and shadow them and learn what they're doing. That's how you get better. Is you hang out with something that increases you and demands more out of you. Yes. If you're the smartest guy in your circle, good luck. Right. It's yeah. like that mouse I caught in my, my garage one day. I, I don't I like mice anyway, but I had one caught it in the garage and when I pulled it out of the trap, it had one eye. Oh. It didn't have one plucked out, it just had one eye. I said, man, you need to get across the pond a little bit. Your family's a little bit too close. Uh, <laughs> you might need to get out of them a little bit. 
You're, you're just regurgitating the same little bit of knowledge that you've got around the same people that know the same thing. Maybe you need to step over and get another perspective. One night I went to this dinner and everybody in the room, everybody in the room was a millionaire. Except me. But buddy, when I started listening to them talk, they didn't talk like I talked. Those things that were obstacles to me, they just just sailed right over it. It started making me think in terms of not having a little, but having a lot. Are y'all following with me this morning? It's like instead of me thinking about what little I've got, I started thinking about the prospect of what it would be like to have more. And suddenly I got excited and I started talking with these people and praying over them and prophesying over them and they thought I belonged in that crowd. Because in that moment, I was just like them. I didn't have it in the bank, but I had it in my heart. Right. You follow me? Yep. Next page. I'm going to hurry up, man. That's good, Pastor. This is what got me jacked up. I'll leave you alone. In 2 Corinthians 4, like I said, I started out, I'm getting old. And I haven't seen some things happen that I won't happen. And suddenly I started realizing I'm out walking pet. And isn't it funny that the verse of the day on my Bible app led me to this. And I realized, you know what? Last night I was, I was watching as I was walking pep. I got back and I was watching this. I'll put it all together. I started watching this uh, program about people who have had near-death experiences. Now, granted, some of these people are it's demonic, and I get all that. Please just pull your fangs back for a second. Some of them were Christian people that died and went and were in heaven and were in God's presence. And all of a sudden, I started listening to them and how happy that experience made them and how fulfilling. And he said that they felt like they were so freed from that body and how they had been, just all these things, accolades. They couldn't, they, he said, the colors, I can't even describe you the colors. And I started realizing I've been shoved in in this life. And I've made everything in my life about this little. And my happiness and my joy and my fulfillment about this little bitty thing. And Paul was telling us back then, before we could look at it, what's temporary. And just fix your eyes on what's eternal. Because what you're looking at is not going to be here long. And everything you're fretting over, and everything you're worrying about, and everything you're stressing over and striving to do. You know what the greatest thing we can do is get home mm. and take people with us. Because that's when it starts. Yes, sir. When we get there, and all of a sudden it's like we've crossed the tape, we've, brought, we've crossed the finish line, and we're home. That's when all this makes any sense. If you, if you, all your life is is comprised of the things that you're doing on this earth, it's but a vapor. It's going to burn up. I was talking to some people the other day, younger kids, about Michael Jordan. They don't even know who he is. Wow. <sighs> Hank Aaron. <laughs> because their records will be plowed over and their, all their accomplishments will just decay with time. But the people that I win for Jesus will be there for an eternity. So the best thing I can do is spend my life on things that last and not on things that don't matter. Amen. Next page. I'll keep it going. Next page. Habakkuk says that. He said, is that even though the field is empty and my cattle are dead, and every bad thing can happen, has happened, yet I'm going to rejoice in the God of, what, of my salvation. Do you know what we should be joying over? Is the God of our salvation. That I will joy in the God of my salvation. Because if I keep my joy fixed on the fact that some glad morning when this life is over, I'm going to be there. Then there's nothing he can do here that can get me down very long because I'm not going to be here long to start with. <laughs> yes. Proverbs says that man is joy by the answer of his, of his mouth. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Why is it important to keep joy? Because joy is what keeps everything else going. How do I keep joy? I find my purpose. I get locked in and plugged into God. And that the, the goal of my purpose is not to accomplish something that men will see in a prod. The goal of my purpose is to get me from here to there. 
and take as many people as I can with me. More factor three is simply this. Just stay kingdom minded. Yes. Another simpler term would be catch your head. And don't let your mind drift off into things that don't matter. Mm -hmm. yes. Because for the joy of the Lord is my strength. And for such a time as this, I was born. Yes. For such a time as this, you were born. Would you pray with me before I send you home? Lord, there's no perfect time to start, so we're going to start today. There's no perfect anything except you. As we sit here before you, Lord God, let us be encouraged to quit seeking outside affirmation. We don't seek signs and wonders. We don't put a fleece out because we've got a promise before we begin. And I'm going to do what you put in my heart to do. And if I fail, you'll just scoop me up and put me back on the path. Because it's not about failing, it's about continuing. And so, Lord, I pray for people in this room. Some of you have quit. A, your dream is laid by the, the wayside because you're afraid to pursue it. And I'm saying in the name of Jesus, no matter what the cost, no matter what the, the difficulties, Pick that thing back up and see if God's still in it. And if he's in it, pursue it with all your might because he's already made the way. He's just, waking, made, he's just waiting for you to make the step. I pray for us, Lord God, if we've gotten beaten down by life and all the circumstances that have filled this earth right now, that we're going to put that aside. And realize that, Lord, in a vapor, in the twinkling of an eye, I'm going to be in the most incredible place around you for an eternity embrace my loved ones the thing that, that I can't possibly fathom or comprehend the one thing that's missing me the reason that I'm never at home here is because this isn't my home but I will be home so Lord let us remember when everything looks down I'm going to rejoice in the God of my salvation and I'm going to rejoice in you would you stand with me We just raise our hands to Lord God, here I am. Send me out of here ready to go. Send me out of here excited again. Send me out of here filled, determined, with purpose, with knowledge, with fervor. Lord, this is the last day that I'm going to let somebody limit me. I'm not going to limit you. I'm not going to help the devil. And I'm going to keep my mind on the things that are you and not staring at the temporary things. For in you is my hope forevermore. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. We're dismissed.